here we go we're gonna do a little bit of splitting uh, with some new axes I made up you know here they are here there's you know a couple of Kelly true temper there's a couple of uh, plum and there's there's the wood there pretty good sized wood it's all dug for it was a dead snag there's you know in spots an inch or two of rod on the outside but you know pretty big this was you know just under six foot down to about four foot so got a piece set up here I got some gloves out I prefer to split barehanded but there's so much pitch so much sap in this wood when I'm actually handling the wood I want to put gloves on but there we go I think this was a, a larger plum like a three and a half pound plum you know all of these are on a 36 inch hickory handle uh, I bought all these handles from beaver tooth handle company and they're really nice handles they feel great in the hand I really like them see I'm just working this one apart right here you know now I'll work on splitting the pieces down a little bit all in all it does does pretty good you know this is some pretty tight grained wood wood doesn't yeah but it's hard to get get wood like this anymore it's uh, pretty good dug fur you know and I try and handle the wood as little as possible as you see I'll you know, kick it around with your foot pull it up with the axe you know bending over and picking it up it gets pretty old so you know pop that one in half right on the ground <clears throat> come back over and work on this you know it's a little bit harder going cross grain like that but these great big pies you eventually kind of have to you know and that one's this one's not too bad at all as you can see uh, you get towards the butt on this log and as is typical in dug fur it gets really kind of stringy you get a little twist to the grain but so you can see that one little quarter there is made quite a pile of wood. So see that's some pretty decent wood. You can see the rot there on the outside. Split some of that off right there. Now look, there's some of that pitch. You know, it's just right in there, just pretty thick. You touch that with your hands, and you know you can get it off. It's not the end of the world. I've heard butter works well. I always just use rubbing alcohol. So we get this this piece flipped down, and looks like I switched to a different axe but I'm kind of explaining here that you know that that triangle piece right there on the tip is a heart and when you're kind of busting them down if you just stay a nice straight lines off of that for the most part easiest way to split it down you get it split down a little smaller than you can go cross grain but this axe here looks like uh, it was an unbranded axe you couldn't find any marking on it but the head was identical to the plum I was splitting with earlier I'm just guessing it's probably about a three pound maybe just under so I don't know if it's a plum or someone that copied a plum but you know a long time ago but it's good split axe, and I'm just kind of plugging away here taking kind of that cheek of that triangular piece off and just working it down and you can actually see right there I'm I'm hitting a knot pretty good sized knot you know and being on a dead tree like this all uh kind of split that knot out there and you can get through these knots pretty pretty easy they're pretty dry and brittle so get that split out to where it's just in one piece because if you can't split through them there's no sense killing yourself splitting it I'll throw them off to the side and I'll just grab a chainsaw you know when I got a pile of them and just cut through the knot and because it really nice firewood that's a good piece to put in uh, get you through the night that burns a lot slower make a little bit of room here big old knot there sometimes you're better off flipping these over and actually a lot of times you are 
to where the knots down towards the bottom so you get a little spread on the wood but you know you can see that knots pretty pretty decent sized you know but pretty pretty brittle so it snaps right through it now see that one just it kind of stopped me there so I'll flip it over and axe is stuck pretty good now I flipped it over so the knots down and it kind of got down in there a little ways and there we go come apart now now see I'm actually you can't see it there but you can see when it hits I'm just flipping over and hitting the back of the axe and it'll come right off and get that one that split out there it's actually easier as the knot gets bigger towards the outside of the log the knots more rotten so sorry for the computer noises I was trying to drag along to see where I'm at I got a brand new camera and it has an external microphone which works great when you remember to turn it on so I had forgot to <laughs> I had forgot to turn it on so there was no audio here hence the voiceover and just throwing some of the wood that we split up in the back of the truck make a little more room for splitting some more this is some really good firewood because it's you know basically standing dry you know these old snags this woods uh, pretty light you know I should have grabbed the moisture meter and took a look at it it's uh, see what moisture percentage it's at because I'm guessing it's pretty low you know standing like that being summertime it's probably whatever the ambient moisture levels are which is as dry as you're gonna get wood Uh, here we go, we'll switch it up. Uh, here's kind of an interesting one. I still need to burn the handle and oil it up. This is a Kelly True Temper. I think someone painted it, you know, silver and black is how I got it, but it's probably a three and a half pounder it's a little more squared up than that plum and and I like it it splits real good you know all of them do and that I have there but part of it is figuring out you know some are better for different different kinds of wood and these are really good for this tight grain fur you know you need something fairly slender to get down through that grain you get in you know some younger fur or something like that and you almost want something with a little more aggressive of a wedge to it to uh, get the piece popped apart Just kind of splitting some of that outer rot off this one real quick. Now 
just kind of making a pile of the scrap that I'll just break up and burn. That stuck my finger right in a pitch pocket. So you got to be careful twisting them off like that. You can obviously break your break your handle doing that. So we'll zoom you in here. Now this is something I've been working on. You now see if you reach over a piece to hit another piece, you can. Uh, really damage your handle so you got to come up with different methods of doing it and here's one you you hit like that so you get that height on your axe handle so you're not hitting it and that would be like if there was a another piece of wood in front of this one that I was trying to split you uh, now you could basically lift your elbow so you come down like that with a swing now with this swing, you kind of lift your elbows as it's coming down, is the way I do it. And it, it looks kind of awkward when you do it slow, but when you get used to it, it, it works pretty good and that gets that angle. Now another method to do it is by no means one that I came up with. Uh, you know, this method here I've seen on Buck and Billy Ray Smith's channel and he calls it the flick and it works really well it works really well with double bits and kind of the the basis of it is you're gonna hit and it just kinda twists the axe there and part of it you're kinda twisting with your wrist a little bit but for me what I found best is I come in at an angle like that and the grain will will do it for you and here's some slow motion of it you see how it just blows that piece of wood out of there you know, and I'm I'm swinging while I'm I'm taking the step. <laughs> if you notice I'm I got the swing going and I'm repositioning the body at the same time. And down it comes and it blows the piece right out of there. Now you need to be careful with this because it will shoot the pieces quite a ways. I'll uh, show that here in a minute. Now that one didn't quite get through there, but you can see the axe still kind of pops. You want just a slightly looser grip when you're doing this because when it hits it's going to twist that axe handle in your hand so you can kind of see how I get it out there too since it was in slow motion never actually seen that before how you're kind of wiggling it at the same time see that one blows out there pretty good now that one shoots way out there I'll uh, pace that one out in a minute. And that one pops right off, but see how your axe handle's not in any risk of being damaged against the piece of wood because it ends up, you know, your axe head's laying sideways on top of the wood when you're done with it. You know, this is another good one if you happen to be splitting on concrete or asphalt or something, or even like a gravel road can be pretty hard. So we'll take a look here. I'll actually pace it out there. It's hard to see as you can see all the, the rotten wood there that I've tossed to the side and some slightly shorter cuts. But that's that one piece that really shot off there. Now I pace it out here and it's somewhere in between 15 to 16 feet away from the uh, block of wood. So that's something to keep in mind if there's stuff around you don't want to hit or people around and you start using that technique you know keep that in mind you're going to be shooting wood all over the place so you don't want to <laughs> hit somebody or break something with it so and those little flares that are built into that axe head design does seem to help a little bit it doesn't create a whole ton of friction but it causes it to spread out just a little bit more so 
So this is a nice little plum. It's hard to see and I'm not lining it up real well, but that says plum there. This is three or three and a quarter pound. And it's uh it splits really nice. I really like this profile and having this it might even be two and three quarter because it is a smaller head. I think it is two and three quarter. But having this on a 36 inch handle, it uh, that thing splits really nice. Of the, I think I've made three double bits and six or eight single bits here in the last couple of weeks. And this axe is definitely my favorite. There's some of this wood that it doesn't split real real well that I you know had to grab a bigger one for, but where it's nice to have several Oh, nice little pile there. So thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.